If you've clicked on this video, it says to me that you believe you've done everything you can possibly do to get your desire, all the tips, tricks, everything, and there's still no movement in the 3D that you can see, or at least if there is movement, it's so small that it isn't enough to justify the amount of work that you've put in. In this video, I'm going to give you the most common reason why a lot of people struggle to manifest their desires or struggle to get any kind of movement, movement at all. So if you're interested in finding out, stick around. Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back. My name is Matthew and I'm here today to give you the only thing stopping you from manifesting your desire. Before we get into that, if you are in need of any of my help at all, the links will be below in the comment section or the description. Join the channel membership. The Discord is actually getting quite a few, fair few people in it now, so there's a lot more conversation, a lot more success stories, a lot more of that, and it's actually quite a nice little community. So join the Discord by being a member of the channel. With that said, let's get into the video. Now, although this is titled The Only Thing, there are actually two things, but they kind of go hand in hand, so I kind of merge them as one. The first one being your dedication to the old story. Whenever you think of your desire, whether it's money, love, anything like that, you more than likely immediately jump to, I don't have this, or this was the last thing that they said, or the company said they didn't have funding, or they said I wasn't good enough, or I don't feel good enough. That is more than likely the first thing that you jump to, which makes sense because we've been brought up to pretty much show whatever is in the 3D is what is and that we have to deal with it. So it makes sense that our minds have developed in a way to immediately go to, this is what is the case before the new story is the case. So, makes sense. And you shouldn't blame yourself too much. However, that is a key thing that is stopping you from manifesting your desires. The fact that you are so dedicated to the old story. Now, in order to manifest our desires, we must be in the new story state at least 51% of the time because it is your dominant thoughts that create. Which means half the time, or just over half the time, you have to be in a new story, and then just under half the time, the old story. Which means you do not have to be like, like that with your desires, where it's like, I'm in this, I'm in this, I'm in this, every single time something comes up. There is some leeway. However, it is best to try and practice immediately going to the new story before the old story. Or if the old story does come up and your mind does go to it, try focusing some more time. Let's say, for example, that you spent five minutes dwelling in the old story. Try spending 15 preceding minutes in the new story. Now, obviously, it, doesn't, it isn't going to be exactly like, oh, I did five minutes, so surely if I do 10 minutes, then that's double that, which means I'm in this new story 66% of the time, because a lot of the time when we're not even conscious of what we're thinking of, we're kind of just thinking stuff and they happen without us noticing. However, the more that you are able to consciously put yourself in the new story more than the old story, the more you are going to be tackling the 51-49% ratio, thus creating your new story. And then the more that you get movement of your new story, the more that you can assign that meaning to your current reality saying this is evidence of my stuff, focusing on that and getting your new, uh, getting your new story to be now. Another thing to remember though is that circumstances do not matter. So anything that was said before, because it was said, if you are holding it in your memory, then to you that is factual. So anything that was said before exists to you. None of that matters. All of that can be changed just by changing your focus and attention. Taking your focus and attention away from the old story and putting it onto the new one allows this old story to break down and fizzle out, thus creating the new one. And this might happen quickly, this might happen over a period of extended time. However, you can take comfort in knowing that the more that you dominantly think of your new story, the more you are breaking down the old reality and creating your new one. Let go of the old story, let go of anything that was said, what you were told, what you thought, or anything like that and just focus on the new. The second reason is your attachment to the current circumstances. Now I know you're probably hearing that and going, but isn't that just the same as the old story? Well, yes, it is very similar. The slight difference is, is this stuff is what is holding on to in your memory, stuff that you are looking back saying, this happened, this happened, this happened. Your attachment to the current circumstances is seeing things for what they are. Seeing things as this must mean that my manifestation is not working because it is showing up right now in this situation. Most of the time with manifestation, there is some form of time delay. It's, it's factual. Some people have things happen immediately. Some people have things taken a long time. But most of us, pretty much all of us can agree that we worked for something for an extended period of time. Maybe it might have been a day, a week, two weeks, whatever. And then it showed up. Very few of us can say that I started affirming today for a new relationship and that relationship showed up today. 
This may be a limiting belief of mine, and I'm not saying that that is going to be the case for everyone. However, nine times out of 10, there is some kind of time delay. This is why a lot of people want to manifest on a time crunch. However, that's for a different video. But what I mean is you are taking what is happening in this moment for face value of this is happening now. Because of the time delay there, that there is in a lot of time when trying to manifest, this thing that's happening right now could have been your thoughts from a month ago. It could have been your thoughts from six months ago. It could have been your thoughts from a week ago. There is no way of determining exactly when that seed was planted. All that we can take comfort in knowing is that is an old seed, which means all the work that you are currently doing hasn't necessarily happened yet, which means your stuff is still to come. However, if you are reacting to what you are currently experiencing, you run the risk of creating more of it. Because if you are dominantly seeing this as this is my reality, this thing that I do not enjoy that is showing up is my reality, that is your dominant state. However, if you can look at it and go, okay, this has shown up, but I know that my desire of this, 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 and this is mine, because I've been doing the work for X amount of time, you can take comfort in knowing that if old negative thoughts are manifesting now, now's positive thoughts will be manifesting in the future, or not necessarily positive thoughts, but now's desired end thoughts will manifest in the future. So if you can get your head around that and just remind yourself of that and then think, if I don't spiral on this, if I remind myself that what I want is coming because of now's thoughts manifesting soon, and you can keep thinking that every time something poor comes up, you are more dominantly being in the new state because you are reacting less to the current negative that you aren't creating it, if that makes sense. So before bad thoughts creates current bad stuff, now's good thoughts create future good stuff. If you are able to ignore now's, good, uh, now's bad stuff and only be positive on it or think of the end or, you know, basically just don't spiral and don't allow it to be your dominant state of this is my reality, but instead this is, you're only going to create more good going forward and then you're going to have less bad to worry about. There's a kind of saying that's very similar to this that knowing what not to do is just as important as knowing what to do. Now, if we imply that into this statement, Yes, you may not be manifesting all the good right now, but not creating more bad right now is just as good as creating more good right now. Because then there's less for you to be triggered by, there's less for you to have to try and avoid, there's less circumstance, there's less old story for you to hold on to. If you are enjoying this video so far and I've managed to break that down and giving you some ideas going forward, please like, comment and subscribe. It really helps the channel out a bunch. Our channel is growing exponentially at the moment and it feels amazing to know we have such a great community. Like I said, the membership is building up, the Discord channel is really building up. So join that so you can be part of the community because I talk to you guys and give you guys ideas and success stories and it's a great community and I really want as many of you to be part of it as possible. And I will be doing very soon members only Zoom calls, which means it'll actually be direct coaching uh, via Zoom. So maybe at the moment, I think I'm gonna do it once a month, but it will be, I get everyone that's on the membership into a Zoom call and then I might pick one or two of you and we will basically just do calls. I'll help you on your situation and you can be involved. So it's basically like video coaching, but just in a group. So it's only £2.99. I don't know what that'll be in your currency, but it's very, very cheap. You run the chance of getting a video call session basically for £2.99. So join the membership. I would love to have you there. With all that said, let's continue with the video. Now I have given you the two things that are stopping you from manifesting your desire. I'd like to now give you something that will help you going forward. Now this is something that has been thrown around a lot and this is not new. I've put this in a couple of my videos. A bunch of other people have done it, but it's simply this one phrased question that will literally completely change your state. And that is ask yourself, how would you think, feel, and act if you had your desire. Honestly, sit there, and if you need to write it out, write it out. If you wanna like put it in your notes on your phone, do that. But ask yourself, how would I think, feel, and act if I had my desire? So obviously in your case, you'd be like, if I had my job or if I had my SP. Write out a list of feelings, write out a list of thinkings, write out a list of actings, and then do them. Start to try and think from that end. The things that you wrote down, what would you think? Start trying to think of those more consciously. Something comes up where one of these thoughts might come into play, think from it from that angle. So let's, for example, say you're trying to manifest money and you're like, how would I think if I received a bill that I didn't like? Well, I would think, oh, that's fine. I got enough money to pay that. So if you ever do receive a bill to pay that you don't, that, that you don't want to have to pay or that it brings up fear or whatever, just remind yourself, oh, I've got more than enough money to pay that. You think as though you do already have enough money to pay it. If it's feeling, let's say, uh, 
if I had enough money, I would feel ecstatic every time I open my bank app. Every time you open your bank app, feel ecstatic. Even if it says nothing, be like, wow, this is amazing that I have all this money and really be like, this is fucking amazing, you know? Feel it, tell yourself, this is amazing because I've opened my bank app. Look how much money I have. How would you act? It might be a case of, I don't know, you want money to pay for a car, start looking at cars that you'd like to be able to pay for. You don't have to actually buy them, but even the act of looking at a car and going like, oh, I could afford that. And then going on to the next one, oh, I could afford that. That is still being in a dominant state. You're still saying, I can afford this. I wouldn't be shopping for cars I couldn't afford. See what I mean? It's not like you don't have to necessarily go out and actually buy the car in order for it to be accurate acting as if, but shopping for a car, telling yourself I could afford that if I wanted to, but then choosing not to buy it just because you don't feel like buying it right now. That is much more acting from the end of never ever looking for cars because you're so poor and broke that you can't afford to ever do so and that you would be silly to do so. See? So ask yourself that question, write down some answers and then try to implement those in your day to day life and try to embody the state of the wish fulfilled by implementing those. And then another question, which I've been getting my clients to ask themselves a little bit at the moment, and it seems to be getting great results. What do I have to lose? The biggest argument that I hear from people when it comes to manifesting is I don't want to do this because I feel silly or every time I do this, I feel silly and blah, 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 blah. So I started to ask my clients to ask themselves, what do I have to lose? If you are not in a relationship right now, if you aren't in a job right now, if you don't have enough money to pay the bills right now, what do you honestly lose by thinking from the end? Answer that right now if you can, or write it in the comments. In fact, yeah, write it in the comment section. Give me one justification as to what you would lose by taking five minutes of your day. Obviously, you'd want to do it more than that, but five minutes of your day to sit there and think as if, or do some shopping for some cars and pretend like you can buy some. Yes, you may feel silly, but is that really that big of a payoff? If you are on my video, you clearly believe in law of assumption to some extent. If you have made it to this far into the video, you clearly have something that holds you to what I'm saying and some part of you that resonates with it. Which means if you believe it, then you know that there's the possibility that it'll work. So the possibility of you having a job that pays well, your SP, whatever, does that outweigh feeling silly for 10 minutes? In my opinion, it does. When I manifested my job, I felt ridiculous saying, I, I work for this place. I am the best employee that this place has. Uh, I am so grateful that they hired me. I did feel ridiculous. I'll, I'll be honest with you, I did. But right now I'm earning the most amount of money that I've ever earned. I feel like a man. And I know that sounds ridiculous, but I pay bills. I feel like a man. I feel like I can take Katie out anywhere and be able to afford it. I can give my kids whatever I want to give them, basically. I felt silly. I can now do everything I want to do. I was in debt. I can now do everything I wanted to do. And all I sacrificed was feeling silly on my own because no one else could hear me affirm. All I sacrificed was feeling silly for a bit. So ask yourselves those questions. How would I think, feel and act if I had my desire? Then think, feel and act like that. And what do I have to lose by letting go of the old story and really throwing myself into the new one? What do I have to lose? I really hope this video has helped. I've actually enjoyed this video quite a lot because it was something that I'm really like passionate about is the what do I have to lose because too many people hold themselves back because they're scared of looking silly, whether it's within the law of assumption or just people that are doing basic action out loud, uh, out in the 3D. People don't want to start businesses because they're scared. People don't want to approach women because they're scared. People don't want to go to the gym because they're scared. People don't want to try a new hairstyle because they're scared. I don't like fear. I am scared of two things. Rabbits and roller coasters. Don't ask me why, but I am. Those are the only two things I'm scared of. I will happily walk into anything because I know that fear and passing that fear creates growth. So I, I get like a bit like, you know, I want you to succeed whenever I talk about people being scared to do something. So I really hope this video has helped. I hope you can kind of get on board with what I've been saying. At, uh, say, I hope you can get on board with what I've been saying. Like, comment, subscribe. It really helps me out. And I will catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.